Welcome everybody to the seasonal diet, eating what our ancestors ate, when they ate it, like we were evolved to do. The hot topic among every male these days is testosterone. Yes, it's true, testosterone levels have plummeted over the past decades among men. I'll touch on why and how we can fix this in other videos as I've covered here. Uh, but in this video we are analyzing the test results of some tribal peoples around the world um, in recent decades. Uh, the common belief is since we know that our ancestors here in the West had almost double the testosterone we do today a hundred years ago. What would our ancestors have, though, a thousand years ago, like some badass raiders in the Viking Age? What would their testosterone have been? Well, we can look at a few things and see if the data reflects the testosterone levels that we expect them to have. First thing, the real accurate uh, measures of testosterone in the blood didn't happen until less than a hundred years ago. After that, doctors and scientists started testing it a lot more regularly, and we actually have a lot of data since the 1970s. And yes, bad news is since then, testosterone levels in men have been clearly plummeting worldwide, not just in the West. But that does not mean testosterone levels keep going up if we go further back in time than 100 years. We don't really have any reliable measures of testosterone from before about 60, 70, 80 years ago. Uh, but to determine testosterone levels of men before that time, scientists use reported testicle size to estimate testosterone levels uh, since the two are very correlated. Basically, in medical journals going back all the way to the 1600s that took a measure of the men's balls, uh, we can use that to estimate how high their testosterone levels would have been. You can see this chart here. There's a great website, by the way, you can check out. Um, you may have expected men's balls back then to be the size of oranges, but they were just a little bigger than ours today in the 20th century. So testosterone levels are estimated to be uh, right around 800 to 1,000 over the past 400 years. It's definitely uh, significantly higher than our average today, but it's not like a roided out bodybuilder by any means. However, in the 1600s to the 1900s, this is a time period in the Industrial Revolution where humans were not living the most healthy at all. People were starved, people were malnourished, and they were not suited for the optimum testosterone from their diet and lifestyle. What would happen if we go back to the Bronze Age or Iron Age or even the Neolithic Age in Europe where our ancestors were living one with nature and the most natural way? Surely their testosterone levels must have been through the roof, right? Well, of course, we don't have any data from thousands of years ago and you can't measure the balls of a skeleton. He's got no balls in the archaeology. So we can't even begin to estimate by that method. But what we can do is use modern day humans in other places in the world who are actually living their hunter-gatherer natural lifestyles that they would have been doing thousands of years ago. Test testosterone tests have actually been done on these people. First, um, there's two tribes interesting um, living around Namibia. The Kung San tribe that measured an average of 473 nanograms per deciliter. That's right around where we are in beta soy boy modern western countries. Um, but the neighboring tribe, the Kavango, they measure quite a bit higher because they had a better food source, being pastoralists, you know, raising cattle, getting better nutrition. Okay, that makes sense, um, but still lower levels than expected. You see, on one hand, we actually find higher testosterone levels in more developed urban populations. In Papua New Guinea, the Bundi tribes, for example, who had moved into more settled uh, urban areas, and they're not uh, living a hunter-gatherer lifestyle anymore. They measured on average 686, but the neighboring tribe, the Hagahai people, still living as hunter-gatherers there, by the way, measured a very low 307. So these people were malnourished as an explanation for their low testosterone levels, not eating the best. So living your natural hunter-gatherer life does not always mean higher testosterone. What really matters is the more healthy diet and lifestyle. And if civilization can provide that healthier diet and lifestyle, then you see positive results in these things. But most of the time, like I said, 
we usually see much higher levels of testosterone among men who are more uh, pastoralists or hunter-gatherers. The Turkana people living as nomadic pastoralists in Kenya measured a quite high 943. Whereas about 15% of the men in the study measured above 1500. That's, that's quite high. Um, and what I would expect from our ancestors in, in Iron Age Europe would be at two, right around those numbers. And you see here the neighboring Kenyan Turkana people. Uh, they had given up their nomadic life for a settled uh, agricultural life and they uh, were at um, 675. So this were exact same people, exact same genetics. You see how big the difference can be just in one generation. It can be that big of a change and uh, certain uh, high individuals with high T levels can range from more than a thousand nanograms per deciliter higher than their neighbors for whatever reason. Maybe it's genetics, maybe some people just have more balls, they're braver, they do things like this, uh, their, their mentality gives them higher testosterone who knows uh, let's look at another study of some tribes from South America as you can see here these are all pretty within the normal range um, they're a little higher than the average city boy of the time and one tribe called the Tsururi uh, standing out above all the rest so there are a few more studies like this, guys. I'll put links to them down below. The point of this video is uh, the more natural and close to hunter-gatherer we get does not always mean higher testosterone. Sometimes a little civilization is exactly what is needed, but of course not too much, because then we can get to the point where we're in it today with some of the lowest T levels ever. It seems like the perfect middle ground for testosterone would be the culture of nomadic pastoralists, where the highest testosterone levels today have been observed in these populations. So these are like high meat eaters with uh, eating high dairy and animal products and that kind of thing. Not completely hunter-gatherer. They have livestock. There's no surprise there. Mongolian herders, for example, the Budoin people in North Africa, and also the Turkana people of Kenya. They have all been observed with very high testosterone. For us Europeans, though, what about us? It's been so long since we've had our nomadic pastoral lifestyle, we have nothing to compare it to. Uh, there's many thousands of years since it's been this, but in the north of Europe, we would at least have been very close to this lifestyle and diet in the, you know, mid-Iron Age, around 2,000 years ago, at the time of the Germanic tribes we hear so much about, but I think even more so in the Bronze Age, going from three, four thousand years ago, and, and maybe a little bit further back. I don't think that uh, us Europeans at the time would have had super high levels of 5,000 like some people have suggested, but I definitely think that a strapping young Germanic tribesman would be hitting the 1,500 to 2,000 uh, uh, measurement mark, especially in the Bronze Age. That's when I think is actually the prime time for all humanity and the healthiest time to be alive, combining our natural life with just enough civilization to make us comfortable and give us optimum testosterone testosterone and health. So follow for more tips. The answer to get back to these levels is to get as close to this diet and lifestyle as we possibly can today and that's exactly what we cover here on this channel. But that's all for today.